what is going on welcome in welcome back i am luke goodish this is save for more so i know i've been um, a little bit inactive here on the channel i've been taking something of a summer vacation spending time with my wife with my newborn son and also taking time to finish up and promote frozen wrath right here is uh, an author copy one of my proof copies um, to make some corrections in but the real frozen wrath the real deal is here the wait is over the wide release is september 30th 2022 as of filming this that's like a 10 days away however i'm going to be doing a secret early release pinned down in the comment will be a link where you can pick up the book early you can become one of the first readers of frozen wrath and I hope you do. I hope that you become one of the early readers for Frozen Wrath. If you do, let me know what you think of it. Uh, leave a review on Amazon. Hit me up on Instagram or here on YouTube. Happy to hear um, your thoughts. Anyway, I on Instagram had asked you guys to leave questions uh, that you wanted answered in regards to the book. So I'm going to be doing the Q&A right here, right now. By far, the most asked question is along the lines of, is there a soundtrack to the book? What music did you listen to while writing the book? Um, songs that remind you of the book. Well, when you purchase the novel, you're gonna find out that there is not only a Frozen Wrath soundtrack, but there's also a Frozen Wrath workout. So the answer is yes, there is a complete soundtrack. There's a complete track list given to you in the beginning of the novel. Um, to answer the question here in a nice quick fashion, the White Buffalo, I think, has the most songs on that soundtrack. So the most frequently played, the soundtrack to it, the White Buffalo, I'd say, is the number one um, vibe. And, and specifically, the song, The Woods. I think that that song really captures the spirit and feeling of the novel. Next is who would play the characters in a movie? So I came from the screenwriting world and uh, my mind works in the way of, of movies. I see things as movies in my head. Um, and in fact, Frozen Wrath is written a little bit like a screenplay in the fact that it's written in present tense. A lot of books are past tense. That's the standard. My book is written in present tense and it takes place in real time. It has this real immediate feel to it. Um, that's kind of getting sidetracked. But the point being, since I work in the, the, the mind frame of, of movies and the world of screenwriting, it's super important for me to think from the very beginning, who is gonna play these characters? That's one of the first things I do is determine who would play this character? And so in Frozen Wrath, um, I'd say Dante Gibbs, the main character, is unquestionably Mel Gibson. He's Mel Gibson with a big old beard. Think Bloodfather Mel Gibson is Dante in my head. Sheriff Moss is uh, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges from like Hell or High Water. And uh, to give you one more character, O'Brien, um, Officer Liam O'Brien in this was absolutely inspired by Dylan O'Brien, and I pictured him a lot. Although, you know, it's funny, is recently I've been picturing Aaron Taylor Johnson, for some reason, as O'Brien. Uh, next question is very similar uh, along the line of characters. What characters from other media would you compare the main character to? Again, I'm going to my film roots. Logan, right? Wolverine from Logan. It's very similar to that. It's a, um, a tale of a guy who's in his 60s. He's at the tail end of things, and he's looking back, and it's one of those stories, a lot like Logan. And I would also say that he is, Dante is inspired by, to some extent, the character that Mel Gibson plays in Bloodfather, in the fact that they both are from motorcycle gangs. Dante Gibbs, in my story, um, was the co-founder of the Hellhounds Motorcycle Club. And in the movie Bloodfather, um, I forget if he was a president or a founding member or anything, but he was a member of a motorcycle gang. So those two characters, Logan from Logan and um, Mel Gibson's character in Bloodfather. Next one is, what kind of writer do you want people to think of you as? Um, and I think that's a cool question. So I, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about that um, for, for the person who asked the question. Thank you. Um, it's, it's interesting and I feel like it's something that it's probably going to change a bunch of times throughout my life and my career. But I think, honestly, hopefully, that you just see me as a writer that um, who who is having fun and is not taking themselves too, too seriously. 
although I like to incorporate themes into my novels and I, you know, I can get pretentious, I can get literary and think of my stuff as deep. I, I mostly, the goal is to have fun and I'm inspired mainly by 80s action films. Like that is my, that is my era. That is my time. So if anything, I just want to be the elevated 80s action guy. Um, kind of like, you know, you see elevated horror. I want to be elevated 80s action guy. And I think for now, if I can be seen as, as the guy who's, who's making cool, independent 80s action type stories, um, that's, that's good enough for me. I'm happy with that legacy. I'm happy with um, just bringing back nice, quick, uh, Pulp Fiction-esque stories of classic traditional heroism. All right, so the last one we have here is what is your favorite scene in the novel? I'm going to have to be a little bit vague for the sake of spoilers and you guys haven't checked it out yet, but um, I think my favorite chapter from a reading perspective, like reading the story, is a chapter called Ticking Clocks and Miscommunications. To me, it's just that it's a it's a classic um, nail biter, uh, edge of your seat scene in in the story. It hits to the heart of what I love about the thriller genre in general. It's one of those chapters that would have me. It's one of those chapters that would have me bouncing my foot, uh, you know, rocking back and forth in my chair, trying to flip the pages as fast as possible. I found it just a, just fun. It's just fun. And I think from a writing perspective, my favorite chapter to write was a chapter called The Ghost of Reckoning. And that is like right at the end, it's towards the, it's the climax. And I just remember that day where I was writing this chapter. And it was one of those ones that was just pouring out of me. The story was coming to a head and culminating to this, to this epic grand conclusion and this violent resolution. And man, it was so much fun to write. Um, I had a friend coming over later in the day to hang out. And the time bled away so fast into these pages that my friend was like almost here and I was still just in my pajamas crushing uh, this story since I had uh, like I had been since six o'clock in the morning. It was it was amazing. It was one of those pitch perfect days as a writer for me. And I loved that. Um, so I had a lot of fun with that. But thank you to everyone who submitted a question and everyone who supported me along the way while making this book um, become a reality. Um, I'm going to have my real actual copy come in the mail here soon um, you guys can get yours right now in that link below thank you so very much and uh i can't wait to see what you guys think of this take care i'll see you guys in the next one